about three years ago, I had the opportunity to add lithium iron phosphate batteries to both the trawler and to the sailboat. And so at the time I added two Lion Energy Safari UT1300 batteries to each boat and subsequently added one more. So for a, three, a total of 315 amp hours, I've uh, been very happy with that setup. But at the time, uh, these batteries were, by all manufacturers, sort of advertised as drop-in batteries. And that's not entirely true because these batteries are always part of a system. And so I thought it would be cool to design a system illustrating all of the key parts, the critical parts, for a safe installation of a quote-unquote drop-in lithium iron phosphate battery. And so that's what I've got here. Um, at the heart of it is the Lion Energy 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. There is a 45 amp charger that is specifically for lithium chemistry. Um, and about the critical part here is the voltage cutoff during the bulk phase. And then the fact that as soon as the battery reaches full charge, the charger shuts off and stops charging. There is a 2000 watt inverter, 2500 watt peak output. And then there is a solar charge controller, 30 amp MPPT. And that is connected via an Anderson connector to 100 watt um, portable solar panels that you can see one of them right there. You can wire up to four of them for 400 watts. Um, in parallel. So this is the system that I built. I had some lumber, weathered lumber, and thought, well, it'd be cool to lay it all out and provide a good illustration of some of the best practices for a safe installation. So I will talk you through some of those elements here. Because lithium batteries are part of an integrated system, there are a couple of key considerations. The first consideration is the size of the cables used to carry the current to power the loads. In this system, for these purposes, the inverter is going to place the highest demand, highest draw on the system, potentially reaching maybe 250 amps um, on the high side. And so this is one watt cable that is capable of carrying 285 amps continuous um, and that is connected to a class T fuse so from the battery to the class T fuse so should there be a short this fuse will blow preventing any more current flowing from the battery and potentially causing damage or a fire so from that class T fuse to a selector switch. And again, this is an important consideration. The selector switch needs to be sized appropriately. Don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this selector switch has a 300 amp continuous rating. So that exceeds the amperage of that might be placed on the system. From that switch to the positive bus bar, from the positive bus bar to an ANL fuse that then supplies power to the inverter. And the same thing happens on the negative side. one odd cable coming off of the battery to a Victron shunt, um, which I'll explain in a minute. And then one odd cable to the negative bus from there, the heavy cable uh, for the inverter supplying the negative side. So size of the cabling matters needs to be adequate with even a little bit of a safety margin for the loads you intend to pass through the wire to carry the current you plan to carry. Appropriate fuse protection in the form of a class T fuse. The reason for the class T fuse is because it has what's called a high AIC which is an ampere interrupt capacity meaning that should this thing see a high load suddenly it will blow stopping the flow of current without actually fusing itself um, closed and allowing current to continue passing through it. 
So class T fuses are generally the fuse to use for lithium battery installations. And then on the inverter end of it, an A and L fuse is typically um, used for there. And you can see that one has a 200 amp rating. Although this is obviously a land-based application here, should be noted that it does meet the requirements and recommendations for a marine installation in many cases. I mentioned that we have line energy batteries on both our sailboat and the trawler, and in both cases those do meet ABYC recommendations and standards. ABYC is the American Boat and Yacht Council, and they set the guidelines for new boat construction and recommendations for safe installations aboard. In addition to proper fuse protection, terminations, and cables, and so on, um, ABYC has a few other recommendations and requirements which are met by Lion Energy and their batteries. Um, one requirement that must be met is a UL listing, and all of the cells meet the UL 1642 listing. Additionally, um, each lithium iron phosphate battery needs to have a BMS or a battery management system. Lion Energy has a battery management system and essentially what that is is an onboard computer that looks a little bit like this and what that does is it monitors the individual cells that are inside of the battery and in the event of an over voltage, over current or under voltage, over temperature, under temperature incident um, the BMS shuts the battery down to prevent any uh, damage to the system or any damage to the you know, peripheral system and other electronics. So the onboard BMS meets that ABYC recommendation. There also needs to be some sort of means or it's recommended that there's a visual means or audible to indicate if the battery is potentially going to shut down. The LED indicators here actually serve that function. Furthermore, in the app itself, uh, being able to monitor the battery remotely serves that function as well. Um, and the case is relatively well sealed. In fact, it's a gasketed lid around the lip here. So though it's not waterproof, it is certainly sort of splash proof. Um, but I uh, keep mine mounted in a dry location and even in a box uh, on the sailboat just as an extra measure. The batteries only weigh 23 pounds, so the cool thing is on the sailboat I had 440 amp hours of lead acid batteries that weighed nearly 300 pounds. I ditched them, added two initially of the Lion Energy batteries, total of 46 pounds and the same usable capacity. Um, so the energy density in these batteries is absolutely fantastic. The lightweight, it's a group four, uh, group 24 size, so these batteries are very compact. The batteries can be wired in series or parallel, up to four in parallel connection. So you could have over 400 amp hours uh, in a relatively small, lightweight package. Backed by an American company out of Utah and offering a limited lifetime warranty, there is significant peace of mind in the Lion Energy batteries and their product line. The battery charger is another critical part. This is a 120 volt shoreside charger. So when you are connected to the grid, you can charge the lithium battery via this charger. Um, like all installations, the battery charger really should be fused, which this one, there is a fuse there. And so from the battery charger, current goes to the fuse, and then from the fuse, it goes to the positive post of the battery here for charging purposes. The negative is again wired into the negative bus. For off-grid charging, when no shoreside power is available, Lion supplies this 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller. So this end here is wired to the battery, again with appropriate fuse protection, and then this end here gets connected 
to the solar panel actually through this Anderson connector. Um, and you can wire up to four of these panels together for a total of 400 watts output. And we've used this camping in on the boat and uh, in the right weather I have seen with just two panels um, eight to ten amps going into the battery. So pretty impressive and the panels uh, fold up and are easy to carry. In most installations it's not uncommon to have an accessory fuse block which is what I've installed here. This would be for some other electronics like a GPS or a VHF radio. All of those can get wired into here and then they would have their appropriate fuse protection to ensure that those more sensitive devices have adequate fuse protection. Power is taken off of the negative bus and the positive bus here at the top and down at the bottom to power it. Again, the uh, cable supplying the fuse block is sized appropriately so that um, it could supply this any item on here at full load, the sum of all of those things together. So nice little Blue Sea Systems uh, accessory fuse block there. Lion does have their own proprietary app for Bluetooth on their newer batteries so that you can monitor the state of charge, how much current is going out, how much current is going in, uh, battery voltage, and the battery temperature. I went ahead and installed this Victron shunt because I like Victron equipment and it works well with a lot of other Victron equipment including like a Servo GX and some other things. Um, so that's what you're seeing here is Victron shunt connected to the iPad via Bluetooth. And so you can see uh, voltage is 13.05, currently 1.18 amp being drawn from the battery. Um, that is due to the fact that the battery is actually powering the iPad right now, charging it, plus there's idle current for the inverter. It's actually on right now. Um, and you can see that the battery I'm hooked up to here has been discharged 64 amp hours and uh, is sitting at about 31 percent. Lions app, I can show you that here I think. So this is actually synced to a different battery. I'll try to, well, I'm gonna get my reflection. <laughs> um, this is synced to their Bluetooth battery which is right over here and um, that has the onboard Bluetooth. Like all Lion batteries, it also has a status indicator indicating state of charge, but via Bluetooth you can check it on your phone, on your iPad, remotely without having to physically uh, touch the battery or be near it. So a handy app, very cool. Um, some nice features that are part of that Lion Safari app. In most installations you'll also have uh, an electrical distribution panel. So I have added one here on the side of my bench. So this powers any additional loads that uh, you might want to add. What I have done here, which is on this breaker down here, on the other side of the bench, I added a typical Blue Sea Systems USB outlet for charging cell phones, iPads, those kinds of things. So it's both switched here, you can see the light illuminated, and it's also switched at the panel on the other side. Um, and the breaker on the panel over here would act as not just a switch, but a, if there were an overcurrent situation, it would trip that breaker, providing protection. So very slick setup pleased with their equipment, um, largely sort of for the RV overland market, kind of off-grid cabin in the woods sort of thing. Um, to my knowledge, I think I'm one of the only people to use their, one of the few people or only people I'm aware of to use their batteries on the boat. Um, I have opened up the 1300, so has a prominent figure on YouTube who knows a lot about lithium technology and solar panels and so on. 
internally these things are well laid out nicely designed really quite impressive cabling size is appropriate chafe protection provided on the cables everything tucked in there nicely and secured really well so haven't had any problems with these batteries at all three years later they're still producing full capacity all in all really a super slick setup We have used the solar panels, a couple of the batteries, the solar charge controller. Uh, when we go camping, we love to camp up in the UP in a pop-up. And so I take a couple of the batteries wired together in parallel, so 210 amp hours. Uh, I run this extra long uh, solar cable that Lion sells, extension cable 25 feet out to the panels. Even though we're camping around the trees and so on, I'm able to sort of chase the sun around. And uh, this last summer, I discharged the batteries, oh, I don't know, maybe down to like 50% or so because um, we had a rainy day or two. And then uh, we had a sunny day. And by the end of that sunny day, the batteries were up to 100% and we never saw less than 80% the rest of the time we were up there. So pretty nice to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. 